So I just want to step aside a little bit, people writing us, so our job, like we said before, that we are not allowed to tell a Gentile to become Jewish. That is the law. That's why we never wrote back on Facebook, become Jewish. Jews for, uh, for Hashem, Jews for the Bible, Jewish for Talmud. Our job, our Torah tells us, Bible tells us, when a Gentile says, I want to become Jewish, tell them it's not for you. We love you as a brother. Keep these seven laws of Noah. But Judaism is not easy, which is true. We have so many laws, 613 to obey. To become Jewish, it has to be from the ultimate soul that you can't take it anymore. Your existence is crying out loud. I want the real Hashem. I want the real God. I want the real Torah. And not the imitation. Now, I just want to step aside a little commercial break, how they say. Let's use our mind a second. We all know that Coke is the real thing. And we know Pepsi, the real Pepsi, is the real thing. I mean, in drinks, real thing is the Bible. Uh, you take, let's say, products in, in the supermarket. You have imitation products and you have the real thing. Right? You have Heinz ketchup in the imitation ketchup. You have the Coca-Cola and you have the imitation Coca-Cola. You have the real ice cream and then you have the imitation ones. Of course, the off brands are cheaper, but the real brands are the main brand and it's expensive and it tastes real good. Now, even though imitation sometimes could taste better or even equivalent to the real thing, it's in our minds after all the advertisement that Coke is the real thing. So you can't sell something to people and saying that Coke gave birth to RC Cola or Heinz gave birth to another brand and this is the real thing. In the real world, you ain't gonna buy it. I'll give you a trillion dollars, you're always gonna say that it's an imitation. And we know that flattery is the best means of imitation. We look even in singers. People are imitating singers in the secular world, in the real world, in the, in the Jewish world. They want to be like this big singer and they're going to do these movements with the dance and do the movement with the singing. You're all going to look aside and say, wow, he looks almost like him. Some people will even say he looks better than the singer. He sounds better than him. But the fact here is, you all know and I know, that he is imitating him. So say what you want to say, that Jesus is the real thing. Our job is to keep quiet, and you can believe what you want to, and just the opposite. It's, uh, and with all respect, we want you to believe what you believe, and stay, you know, in believing, because uh, the ultimate in life is to believe, and we know there's only one God. You want to say God gave birth, and to a son, and a son-in-law, and a grandson, but the fact here is, is one God and one Torah. Now to answer to the atheists that don't believe not in Jesus and not in the Torah, they say that we came from monkeys. <laughs> to them, I have a question and an answer to them too. There was a story I saw, read, that one of the big multimillionaires in Hollywood said if anybody can produce and show me that there is a God, I give away half my wealth. So all the rabbis were thinking of ways of showing and producing that look that the Torah says this and says that. One person, one rabbi came over to him and sat with him and he won the big prize money. What did he tell him? He says, okay, you know what? Let's put aside. I'm 50% like you if there is a God or no God, okay? But one thing I know for sure, there's, I'm on this world right now and I have children, and they're learning Torah, and we're telling them there is God, and they are preaching the word of God, and what the Torah tells us to respect one another, not steal, lo signov, lo sinov, lo sachmod, right? We have the 10 tablets, and we have the Torah. So they are doing what God tells us, and they're living a beautiful life, come Shabbat, they're eating cholent and kugel, we're sitting down at the table, we're singing at the Shabbos meal. We're having such a beautiful life to 70, to 90. No complaints. 
then the question between me and you is when we close our eyes and now they're going to be putting us away for a while till we, we believe there's going to be reincarnation, Tchiyat HaMesim, and you're debating and I'm debating. Now if we close our eyes, let's say that I'm right, that there is the world to come and all the sages and everybody's waiting for us there and you're going to be looking there as a loser and saying, wow, I didn't have this world and I don't have next world. And you lose both worlds with all your hundreds of millions of dollars. But I, in the other sense, my kids, they all had a beautiful life and we close the eyes and let's say, God forbid, there's no afterlife. Well, we had 90 years of perfect life. And you know, I want to tell you, it's a traditionally in the Jewish homes that we don't have TV. You ask a question, I don't know, this year alone, I don't know how many hundreds of shootings in schools. I mean, I'm the first one to scream out loud, throw the TVs away. I mean, in TV, every little kid watches a man picking up a gun, shooting his neighbor, his fellow, his wife, his kids, his this. I mean, history, we've never seen so many killings, innocent children. We're crying for them here. By us, the Jewish nation cries for any little bit, any person, an ant we walk around, we shouldn't kill it. A little kid, a boy, 18-year-old, decides to take the lives of 30, 40, 50 kids in schools. Now, I'm not going to say Judaism doesn't have a murder once in a while, but it's not. I don't think history has ever had. I don't want to say bad to God, you know, it should happen. But we never had a, murder, a Jewish boy should come in and murder his classmates. You can say what you want to say. It's the Bible, the Torah, that we have no TVs to teach the kids to, uh, you know, to assault another person, to kill him, to steal. Because we're taught as a young kid, your mother, your father, the rabbis, the holy rabbis tell you, no, 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 behave. If you don't want to sit in jail or you don't want, we get scared. By us, the main thing is the jail of God, the jail of Gehenom. H-E-11, I call it. He-11. Everybody knows what it is. H-E-L-L. -L. So we are, you know, I get some comments on Facebook why we don't put women, ladies, because we keep away, you know, even the synagogue, the separate seating, we love the women more than you love them. The biggest proof, 98% of people stay married till 120, get married with the first wife and stay married. But... More than that, the purity, the livelihood, the oneness, the achtos, even when they went to Holocaust, each one, they died together. They said, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. They all died as one. They all had this oneness when we die, when we get born, when we go to Gan Eden in, in paradise. We're all oneness. We're never one person. When they shoot one person in Tel Aviv, you just shot millions of Jews around the world. So this rich person in Hollywood loved his answer. And he actually gave him over his hundreds of millions of dollars. He said, you know what? You're the first one that's speaking the truth. So let's say he, we satisfied one person. But now we have to satisfy because I travel the world. And many questions I deal with all, uh, mainly not orthodox crowds, which the boys and girls ask me questions, maybe, maybe, how do you know so for sure you're showing me books, you're showing me um, traditions, how do we know that the Torah was not written by Steven Spielberg? Maybe the Torah is given by, written by uh, Steven Spielberg from thousand years ago, just like we have today, movie producers, he wrote all these stories, the, the Torah was a made-up thing, God forbid, but it can't be. So I tell them that in commercialism, take McDonald's, take, um, like we said before, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, take any movie that's out, they'll always advertise it commercially in the newspaper, saying you have to see the se sequel, you have to see the second how great it is. You saw only one movie, watch the second one, you're gonna fall off your chairs. The third one, you're gonna, they're gonna have to take you to the hospital. That's how scary or great it is. Anything commercially, 
that was written by a movie producer, it's going to tell you the greatness of it, not the badness and the scariness of it. Our Torah, that's what I want to bring to you, very interesting, in Parshas Eschanan, it says over here, when God gave the Torah, it says, now you have to remember, if this was commercially, like a written by a movie producer, this is not the way you sell a movie. You want to sell the Bible, you're saying, wow, the Bible is going to give you such peace of mind. It's going to give you billions of dollars. Join the Bible. No, 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 no. The Bible tells you, I'll translate it. God didn't take you because you're the most of all nations. God loves you. Very interesting. The word hamaat means you are the least from all the nations. First of all, prophecy, we are the least of all nations from the first day on, like we said, till today. So anything commercially, as we see advertised, McDonald's, billion served, and Coca-Cola, you're going to get the frizz of your life. And anything commercially, when you want to advertise it, you say positive notations. The Bible, just the opposite. It says, which empaches bechikosai, right? In Vayikra, it says that if you don't listen to the Bible, you're going to have such pain, and you're going to die, and you're going to have all these uh, uh, insects going to come to your houses. When you got them, you're going to have a negative, and your, your enemies are going to hit you and going to hurt you. Now, if it's commercially saying that it's a great thing, the Torah, and we know it's a best-selling project, so uh, it wouldn't advertise it that way. The Torah is speaking in a very spiritual way, that telling you that, no, that if you, you want to uh, behave, you'll uh, live long and you'll have a great life and a purest life. But if you don't behave, it's going to be terrible. And that is not what we see in commercial. So we can't be a Steven Spielberg from the times of, Martin, of the giving of the Torah, of those times, thousands of years ago, wrote this beautiful story with Noah and the Teva and all the stories that we read in the Bible. This is coming from God himself, and that is our beauty in learning and living the Torah. So the Bible can be written by a movie producer for 200 other reasons that I can't get into now because I just wanted to make a small speech before the Kabbalah Torah before the receiving of the Torah, which is Shavuot, which is next week. So I just wanted to make some very important comments, which I mentioned, that why we don't respond to all the comments, and we'll never do. But I do ask respectively from the people, if you understand that we are believers in Torah, the original Torah, if not to comment on JC, because you're not going to add anything. We ain't... The more you write about it, the more we laugh about it. So your writings ain't going to change us after 5,000 plus years to tell us that, you know, this is a new J Jewish religion and he's the grandson and the great-grandson and the son-in-law. You know, we, such stories we only laugh at. I saved the last for the best, which we asked a question we did not answer thoroughly before. The Torah starts with bet and ends with lamed. Starts with b and ends with l. Lamed is the initial l. Why? So this is the magic. I'm going to tell you something. Even if you're not Jewish, you'll listen to it. You'll hear the depthness of how we overcome, overcame the Holocaust, the Pharaoh in, in Mitzrayim, the Spanish Inquisitions, and all the terrorism that's going on today. How we overcome it and how we overcame it. Very simple. The Torah ends with Lamit and starts with Bet is Lev, heart. Why heart? In the letter Lamit and Bet, you put Hashem's names, God's name, is only those two letters, Lamit and Bet, do you get a word. When you take Lamid and you put Yud, Lamid and Yud is Li. B means in Judaism, in, uh, in uh, Hebrew, me. Lamid and He means her. Lamed and Vav means him, and Lamed and He. Bet, you put the Yud, is B, is me, Ba is her, Boy, him, and Ba is her again. Yud, K, Vav, K, how you call it, 
put it next to Lamet and Bet. Judaism, the Torah, is not any book in the world. If it was, then it would be another book. It wouldn't be in the Guinness Book of Records. As you understand, that is the ultimate selling book in the world. But we know as Jewish people, our nation, all our rabbis have what is called the holy wind, Ruach HaKodesh. In these two letters that the Torah starts and ends with, show us that Hashem, God is in Lamet and Bet, means Yud K, Vav K, that's Hashem's name, God's name, that we learn Torah, not like a normal learning. Do you know people learn? They starve over Torah. They don't eat. They, I'm not saying that's how we learn today. We eat, we eat a breakfast and lunch and supper. But our sages would sit in a corner all day and cry over the prayers, cry over the Bible, cry, cry. And that is the holy wind that we have that Hashem gives us the power, the most powerful, the least nation, like we just said before, but the most powerful in the nation in the world that everybody's copying us. How many Moshes, how many Moses there are, how many Abrahams? Google it. You'll see there's not one family and then five, ten families doesn't have the name. Now, if people are naming their kids after our rabbis and forefathers, means telling you something that, not saying that's a proof that it's true, but there's something going on here that Judaism has in it such ultimate truth that no other religion has and why we are the most powerful, holiest nation that everybody wants to make us to believe in the fake Coca-Cola. We ain't going to do it. We ain't going to accept it. So I just want to end with everybody. Any Gentile out there right now that wants to convert, my friend, we have open arms for you. We want to accept you. We'll do anything in our power to make you feel at home. Come to our houses. We'll show you Cholent. We'll give you the Kugel. We'll give you the hot, warm soup. We'll give you the beautiful halas, halas for Shabbat. You'll enjoy Judaism, but my job is to tell you, stay away. We love you from the far. We love you as brothers and sisters on Facebook and YouTube. Keep your religion, but to be with us, you have to have that ultimate wanting. You have to have that ultimate, please, I can't exist anymore, like we say. Then we will accept you with open hearts, my friend. I want to wish everybody a happy, happy Yom Tiv and a great, great Shabbos. And you should have such a great life. I want to wish every, every one of my people who out there, friends, I call them on Facebook, you should have health, wealth, and time to enjoy it. And God should bless you, your families, your children, your grandchildren. You should go to the weddings of your great, great grandchildren. And we should see the real Messiah Mashiach Tzitkenu, Bimheira Biyamenu, in our days, Amen.